Okay, okay, okay. Welcome to another video. I, I did a video showing this, the back of my shop, reminiscing about how it might have been Ab Abram, Norm Abrams' uh, workshop, and then it was maybe Yankee workshop. And it might, anyway, it's neither one of those those guys. But somebody made an interesting comment about my the back of my garage, my shop. Let's go a little closer. You can see some of the siding is a little bit loose. It's an interesting story to why that is. Let's, let's just see if we can get a little closer over here. I should fix it. I mean, yes, I should. You can see that's loose right there. If you were able to look up in there, you'd see daylight. Let's see if we can get up in there. I don't know if I can get up and reach up there. I'm not sure if you're seeing that or not. Let's go around the other side and get a, a, another interesting perspective. This is the, the back <laughs> where nobody ever sees, for good reason, it's not organized, it's a mess. You can see this uh, little um, shed. You can see over here, it's uh, burnt a little bit. If you go inside, you can actually see, this is where I'd sample paint and whatnot, stain. This caught on fire because my original shot, wait, let's turn this around. So I wanted to just show you this perspective from out there. You can see the, the uh, garage, the overhang and a wall there. The interesting story is how this happened. This is the uh, second garage that was here. The first shop that was here was actually a cape. This is now just, it's a ranch style, single floor. The, the previous one had a, a full upstairs. Uh, through uh, circumstances, we had a, back then, this was in 2011 or 12, somewhere in there. We had a, a kerosene space heater that we were just heating as needed. And the kerosene space heater defaulted. It was way in the back. And the fire marshal came after it had burned completely down and said, uh, they, de they determined the space heater was the cause of it based on the burn pattern of the studs, whatever was left, which was very little. So we rebuilt this. But the interest, interesting story so this was the corner from here over. This was the corner of the old garage. So we, were at, we kept the same footprint. Poured a six, uh, six inch slab, four inch slab on top of the existing slab, but we also put two inches of foam between the two chunks of concrete, so to speak. We put a six by six pressure treated beam all the way around and built the walls on top of that. It's been great. So then, uh, before in the in the planning process to rebuild, uh, I, I went to the town. And I said, "Do I have to put it back exactly as is?" And they said, "No, you just have to maintain the same footprint." So I did. I said, "Can I do a, a like a 12 foot overhang?" And they said, "Sure, as long as it doesn't touch, as long as <clears throat> this point doesn't touch the ground." I said, "Okay," and. So I'm really close to my property line over here. Uh, it wouldn't pass zoning to be able to do that. So uh, I went back. I said, okay. So after we built it, uh, I said, can I pour a concrete slab down there uh, under the overhang? And again, they said, yes, as long as it's not uh, within, I think, 35 foot setback from the neighbors. So that's what we did. We poured the slab and went through one winter and noticed that the snow, when it came off, as it built up, 
the snow would come in, it'd come in way into here. It'd be a snow bank like that. So effectively left us about four feet of floor space in here. And I thought, oh, what, what can I do to, to fix that? So I went back, I said, can I, can I build a, a wall? You know, like a little stub wall. He says, you can build a, a wall as tall as you want as long as it doesn't touch the ceiling. Let's go look at that. We can do it as long as it doesn't touch the ceiling. Letter of the law. Okay, so this is what I did. We built this, uh, it's actually like a nine and a half foot tall wall. The, uh, the wall doesn't touch the ceiling all the way around. And therefore, that's why you see daylight over in that corner. The siding has fallen off. I've got to fix that siding. I used two by four bracing to attach to that wall to go over and stabilize that wall. Did that in a couple of places and it works great. Where are we? There we are. All the way across. It worked great to hang my ladders on, miscellaneous siding, things like that. I need to finish. I haven't had time to finish this opening here. I can ply with that. So now I have this all this, all this dry space that we can use for miscellaneous storage. I'm sorry, it's a mess. It is a disaster. It's the end of the season, so we will be, uh, or I will be cleaning this up this winter, getting it nice and organized all the shelving, see what I need to throw out and whatnot. Another little fun thing, out here, that's pretty much the woods, and pretty much the, at the fork of our road, one road is called Bear Hollow Road, which is over that way a few hundred yards down into a little hollow. The bears are here quite often. It, they'll come through here. Saw a mother bear and three cubs last year. We haven't seen any this year. So I don't know where they are. Anyway, this is my story of why there's a hole in the back of my siding. I know, I have to fix that up. It's like the shoemakers, kids don't have shoes kind of thing. It's functional though, it works, it really helps storage-wise quite a bit. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this quick little kind of a sideline, side note uh, video. Thanks for watching and we'll have real building videos coming out soon. Thanks.